So Cassandra is a NoSQL columnar data store, but how do we use it? I will walk you through the essentials of Cassandra. I'll first set up a schema, then we'll load some data into the schema, and then we'll run some queries on the data. So first we're gonna connect to Cassandra. I'm just doing this on my normal Mac terminal, by the way. Okay, and now we are gonna enter Cassandra shell. I'm running Cassandra on Mac OS. Uh, if you're using another operating system, you're gonna follow the same steps. But instead of using brew to start Cassandra, you would just use service Cassandra start on a Linux system. Okay, that's annoying because you have to run this command seven times to get something. Okay, that worked. So once we are inside our Cassandra shell, we can write different queries that will get executed by Cassandra. This is executed in CQL, which is the Cassandra query language. So right now, every command that will get executed is not in bash, but it's in Cassandra's own query language. So first we are gonna create a key space, which is Cassandra's equivalent of an SQL database. And I will just name my key space data. You can pick any name you want. Like in SQL, keywords that are recognized by Cassandra shell would be capitalized and our variable names would be lower cases. Uh, but you can't just create the key space like this. So you need to specify some additional options. So one thing that needs to be specified here is the replication factor, which will tell our Cassandra whether we want to run on a cluster or just locally. So one option we need to specify here is the replication factor, which represents how many copies of the data in the specific key space will be stored in Cassandra. So one reason we want to replicate data is for fault tolerance. So in case one of the nodes goes down in the cluster, another one will be able to take over. And here we will give two options. One is class, which will represent whether we want to apply the same strategy to all the nodes in our cluster. And the second one being the replication factor. So class with the value simple strategy, which means that all the nodes in our cluster will have the same replication factor. Replication factor, value of one, which means we only have one copy of the data. Typically, we would use a replication factor of three for stability. And now we can switch into the key space we have just created. So the use command here means that every command that will run from now on will be within the key space we have just created. And we can also see that the prompt has changed indicating that we're working in the data key space. So now that we're Within our desired key space, we can create a table with the create table command. And we will first specify the key space in which the table resides, data, and then followed by the name of the table. Whenever creating the table, we will need to specify all the columns within the table, as well as the data type inside those columns. Another thing we can specify here is which column will be the primary key of this table. So you can do that like this. I have here a column called ID, its data type and integer. And then I'm also specifying this will be my table's primary key. And again, just to emphasize where you see me writing in capital letters, these are Cassandra keywords. And then the lower case are variables that I'm choosing. So Cassandra can store multiple data types. Here we use some of them as an integer, text, decimal. There are a lot more and you can read more about them. And if you want to find out more about what they are, you can look at the documentation. So let's have a look at that. So this is the main Cassandra documentation page. On the left, you can see all the subsections. And right now we are looking at the data types. If you scroll down here, you can see a table of all the supported data types in Cassandra. Now that we have created our table, we can have a look at it using the command describe table, followed by the name of the table. And remember, when you want to look at a table, you first need to specify its key space. 
followed by its table name. This is the output that we're getting. We can see all the columns we have created, the data type, and some other default options that have been set up by Cassandra. So actually you can also run describe table retail data only. And that is because I only have one table in any of my key spaces. But if I had multiple tables with the same name in any of my key space, this will raise an issue. So let's now load some data in the created table so we can run some queries on it. We can do that using the copy command in Cassandra. And we will need to specify all the column names as well. So I'm going to copy data into these tables and specifically into these columns. And using the from statement, we will specify where to copy the data from. And this will be just a local path on where I have saved the data I want to import. And then I will also specify that we want to include the headers as well. That is the wrong path, so I just need to modify it here. And now we're all good. So we got a data in, now let's take a look at it. So let's first visualize all the columns in our table. So here's all the columns in my table. So if you want to select a particular column, instead of using star, which means selecting all the columns, you can just give it that column name. So sometimes if you have a lot of entries in your table, you will only see a few of them. And then this more statement, if you want to get back to the prompt, you just press Ctrl C. And now if we just look at the country column, we can see every row in this column. So now we can run some queries on our data. For example, let's look at the sum of all the prices in our table. We can do that using the sum uh, command in Cassandra. And this will give us the total sum. So if you're familiar with SQL, all these commands will look familiar and the learning curve isn't steep. So if we go back to the Cassandra documentation now, into Cassandra query language, we can have a look at all the functions that are supported. This includes scalar functions or aggregate functions. Yeah, and then there's a lot of examples here. Okay, so for example, if I wanted to find out how many rows are in a particular column, this is how, what I would do. Here's your best friend, Stack Overflow that will point you to all the right direction. You can just search here. So that's the most important thing, knowing how to use the documentation to find the right commands to query your data. And with that, you're all set to start using Cassandra.